Bill Bright said, you know, the church needs to go on a 40-day fast. You know, he called the church. We need to go on a 40-day fast. We need to repent. We need to come back to God. And so Reuben heard this. He's like, Josh, this guy was preaching. Now we got to do a 40-day fast. Let's do it, Josh. I'm like, yeah, man, 40-day fast. What? Like, dang, man, that's awesome. I'm down, man. Let's I'm ready, man. I'm ready to get serious with God. I'm tired of just playing with God. I really want to get serious. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this with you, Reuben. Let's do it, man. And so me and Reuben, I was 12. He was like 15. We went on a 40-day fast. And I had, um, it was a fast of bread and fruits. I, I could have bread and fruits and juice and milk and water. So liquids pretty much. Um, and so for 40 days, it's all I, I had. And um, I was 12. And, you know, the fast was so powerful. But the fast wasn't really what changed my life. What changed my life is that I started spending time with God every day. Because I was fasting. I was like, dude, I'm doing a 40-day fast. I have to fast, I mean, I have to pray, and I have to read my Bible every day, or else I'm just wasting my time, I'm just starving myself for no reason. I might as well just start eating, you know. So I was like, all right, God, I'm going to start spending 30 minutes a day with you. So I was like, okay. So I started spending 30 minutes a day reading the Bible and praying and worshiping God. And at first it was a little hard for a couple of days, but then it became easy. By the end of one week, it was like, okay, this is easy. This is real easy. Okay, I'm going to stretch myself. And I said, I'm going to start spending an hour, God, an hour with you every day. So I did it. The first week, it was real hard. I would fall asleep. I would, I would think it's so boring. You know, what do you pray about for an hour? I would like pray for like five or ten minutes and I'd be like, okay, I'm done. You know, I don't have anything else to pray for. I'd read the Bible like one or two chapters and I would start falling asleep or I was you know, it would get boring. and But I had made a commitment. One hour. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Whether I feel like it or not, I'm going to do it. And so I just kept going. So the first week was real hard. The second week, it became easy. I could do it, you know. The third week, I started loving it. I just, I, I, I just loved to just read the Bible and just pray and seek God. I just started loving it. And by the end of the fast, it was like the greatest thing in life. It was the best part of my day. Like I just couldn't wait. I was done with my homework and I was done cleaning my room and all that stuff so that I could just seek God with all my heart and just pray and read the Bible. And I just started burning for God. Just burning for God. And, and at the end of the 40-day fast, I looked back I was like, dude, this has been the most amazing time of my life. I'm not going to stop doing this. And so I kept spending time with God. I said, you know, and you know, the amazing thing in this, this is crazy. I mean, my parents were praying for me all the time. They, they loved me. They prayed for me. But they didn't tell me to go on a 40-day fast. My mom was worried when I told her I was going to go on a 40-day fast. She tried to make me eat, <laughs> you know. And then, and then they didn't tell me to pray an hour every day. I just did it because I just thought... Logically, that's yeah, four, hours with God a day. four hours with God a day. Whatever time I can find in the day that was free, I would spend it reading the Bible. I would spend it praying. I would spend it worshiping. To the point that for two months straight, I spent four hours a day. Just I, I would read two hours of the Bible and two hours of worship and prayer. Straight. And I would just seek God and seek God and seek God and seek God. And that was the first time I heard the voice of God. When I was 12, I just, I sat in my closet and I said, God, I'm not leaving this room until you speak to me. I'm going to, you know, I've heard that you speak to people, you speak to Christians and stuff. I've never heard your voice, God. I don't care what it takes. I'm going to sit here until you speak to me. And I sat there for like 15, 20 minutes doing nothing. I challenge you guys to try to do that one day. Just try to sit for 20 minutes without having your mind wander, start daydreaming, start falling asleep. Just sit there for 20 minutes and wait. It's a challenge, man. But I just, I just sat there. I was like, God, I'm going to listen. I'm 
I'm, I'm here, I'm listening. And then finally just this scripture just came to my mind. And then I looked it up and it was like, boom, it just like changed my life forever, right? And, um, and then that's how he just started speaking to me. He would just show me a scripture and then I would read it and it would just blow my mind and it would speak to me. And um, he just started speaking in many ways. Anyway, so my relationship with God started just growing and growing and growing and growing to the point that when I was 13, I just started preaching the gospel on the streets. I started going with my dad every Friday night to preach in the bars. We would go to bars like from like 9, 10 o'clock at night all the way till 1, 2 in the morning. We would go to bars. We would talk to prostitutes, to drug addicts, to drunkards, to bartenders, everyone to start preaching the gospel to them. I was 13, you guys. How could that happen in a 13-year-old? You look at 12 and 13-year-olds and you're like, dude, they're like little kids. They're so little. They're so immature. They're so, you know, oh my goodness. But God did it in me. Why? Because every day I was seeking His face. It's not because of me, you guys. I was, it's not like I'm special. It's just because I was reading the Bible. I was praying. I was worshiping God. And he started speaking to me. He started changing me.